Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below for Sunrise Lane or any other game. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be building up different neighborhoods. We're going to be building houses and we're going to be trying to have the tallest set of houses or the largest string of contiguous houses but also putting them in the right locations because with real estate, it's always about a location. Today we're talking about Sunrise Lane. This is a Rhino Canizia design that is a re-implementation of Rondo, uh, which came out many years ago, and they've re redone a lot of things with the game and made it look beautiful. Let me show you. I'll see you on the other side. In Sunrise Lane, each player is going to be putting their own types of buildings out on the board, and you're going to do so by playing these different colors and different types of buildings. The art is beautiful. Now here is the board laid out. Here is where everyone's going to be starting off if this is the center. And if you'll look, there's four neighborhoods. There's this red one here, this blue one, this red one, and this blue one. This will be important for uh, end game scoring. So think, remember those four neighborhoods. Now you'll start with some cards and on your turn you've got two choices. You can build, which is one of the choices. And when you build, from the beginning you have to build off the center. So here I could build here and you notice it has like a two pips here. So I could play a red card like this and go on to this red building. And that's gonna get me two points because it's like this. Now you can play as many cards as you want. Now I could build off the center or I could build off here. So maybe I play a purple and again I'm gonna put my, I'm the red color so I'm always building red buildings. I'm putting on this purple one. I get one point because that is a one. Now I could build here, 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 here if I want to. And let's say I have two yellows. I spend two yellows. Why do I do two? Well, because however many cards I play, that's the size building it is. Now, this is gonna be two and they stack. This is three. Three times two is six. So I just got six points, seven, eight, nine. It's got eight, nine points. I got nine points there. And I would just move up the score track. That'd be the next player's turn. And when they go again, they can now go here, 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 or here. Cause they can build off any building that's there. They don't have to build off just their own. And by the way, after you build, you get to draw a card. On your turn, if you don't want to build, you can draw two cards. You do have a hand limit of five. You have to discard to five after you draw, so it keeps your hand limits tight. Now let's say it's the blue player's turn. Let's say they play a green. They get here for two points. Then they discard any color card to put a park here. Again, you have the same building rules. It has to be contiguous from something else that's out there. They didn't have a red. So they could discard any color card, maybe a blue, to put a park there. Why would they do that? That now allows them to reach out to here, because here, here, because you can now that's sort of considered a spot that you could build off of. And now let's say they drop three purples. This is four. Three times four, that is going to be 12 points. So that produces it. Then they would draw a card after building. Next player's turn. That's pretty much the entire game of how you play. Now the game ends as soon as there, someone has two or less buildings left and then you play so everyone has equal turns. Then you do the final scoring. Remember I showed you two of the neighborhoods had blue outlines. Whoever has the highest buildings or the most of the highest buildings will get 10 points, second place six, third place three. B is you're trying to have the most buildings in these neighborhoods. So there's two red buildings. Whoever has the most in each of those building, uh, neighborhoods is going to get 10, 6, and 1 to have the most. C is have the longest single string of contiguous houses anywhere on the board. 10, 6, and 1 for the 10, 6, and, sorry, 10, 6, and 3. Uh, for first, second, third place there. Add that to your points. Whoever has the most is the winner. All right. Now, before I get to my final thoughts, I want to let you know that if you like my content, there's now ways to get bonus content like first impression videos well before a review will come out or for many games I don't even end up reviewing. You can even vote for which games get reviewed on the channel. You can also see me opening up packages and getting content earlier than everyone else. And now you can see what you're missing with a free seven day trial at patreon.com slash gameboygeek. Yeah, so this was a re-implementation of Rondo and Rondo came out in 2012 and that made the Spiel des Jahres recommended list. Not one of the three nominees, but one of the recommended lists so highly, highly thought of back then. And I know they did a lot of development with the game and uh, obviously it, it looks way better. Um, one thing they added, I think Rondo didn't even have any of these end game gold things that you were going for from what I, from what I understand. Uh, so they, they, they put all that stuff on there. For me, this is sort of like a cross between like Ticket to Ride and New York 1901 from Blue Orange Games. So it's sort of family weight games where you're either, you know, taking, uh, taking cards or playing cards. And when you play cards, you're doing stuff on a board. Uh, very ticket to rise that way, route building, sort of blocking where other people are going, but then New York 1901 because you're trying to create neighborhoods in certain places and things like that. And so it's like those two games had a baby. Now, the table presence on here, this game's great because you've got all these houses and as the game's going on, they're all getting put on, they're all getting stacked up. 
and each of the players' houses look a little bit different from each other, so definitely has a, some good table presence there. Uh, I love streamlined turns in games. <clears throat> this one has it. So it's play some cards, as many as you want, and put some buildings out, and then draw a card. Or, instead of building, draw two cards. And really strange, turns are so fast. Like, oh, I gotta drop one here, and then two here, and I gotta stack, and then your turn. Me, I'm gonna draw two cards, your turn. I'm gonna play here and here, your turn. Like, it, it moves so fast, but there's still a lot to, a lot to think of. The game has, it's kind of like a game of chicken, because you're like, you're trying really hard not to set others up, because if you go and you're like, oh, you leave yourself next to like a five spot or a six spot, you know the next player, if they have that color card, they're gonna just get it, right? So you're kind of setting them up. Even if you're like one away from that, you're still kind of setting them up because it might just waste a color card to get next to it and then place on there to get the bigger points. So, but you're also trying to do things yourself as well. So it's it's kind of like you're, you're feeling out the edges of the map. You're like, oh, I don't want to get too close over here. I don't want to get too close over here. I can get a lot of points here. Uh, so it's a little bit of a game of chicken, which is pretty interesting because you're trying just to, to, to go different things, but you're also trying not to set other players up. Uh, I love those different neighborhood goals. So, you know, two of the neighborhoods, it's the biggest, tallest buildings. The other two is the largest contiguous. It gives you things to think about that, you know, as you're playing, it's not just about, hey, I'm going to play here and get the good scores. You're also thinking of some longer term goals and you're trying to fight against other players for those. Uh, I like that your hand limit keeps things tight. Uh, I think this is one of those games that could just be a loosey-goosey game where you just, you know, you, you know, I'm drawing cards, all these things, and you just have like this huge killer turn, right? That you can't do that because you've got that hand limit. I, I believe it's five. Uh, and so you, you've, you know, it's tight. You can't just drop a bunch of stuff. Even just to get a building of three tall is tough because that means, you know, 60% of the cards in your hand have to be that color and you got to have them at the right time. Uh, so it keeps it tight, uh, which presents turn angst in this game turn angst that's a that's a term i use when like you know like you play and then like it's other players turn you're just like wobbling back above your turn like don't go there don't go there don't go there oh it's my turn great i'm doing here Whew, you know stuff like that so you have that anxiousness of the turn sometimes in the game and it gives some tension there and i like it uh not a lot negative to say here this was the hit for me of the games that i played at gen con this this is just so good uh, negative thing, the, the game is considerably best at three players. This this game shines its absolute best at three players. Two players, uh, you don't have as much interesting things with the end game goals because it's like zero sum and it's like, you know, you'll win two, they'll win two usually uh, unless they're falling asleep. Uh, and with four, you get less buildings, which means you're getting less turns and more stuff happens in between you, uh, in between your turns. So you have less control as well it's more chaotic now don't get me wrong if somebody came up like hey can you teach me sunrise lane uh i would gladly play it at two three and four but if i'm going to suggest the game and be like hey we gotta play this i'm gonna be like we got three players cool let's play sunlight sunrise lane other game other ones it's not a bad game with those other player accounts it's just this game really sings at three i think um and so so that's it and so the other thing is uh the other negative is you know, because it's such a sort of a bit of a cutthroat game, sometimes winning or losing can come down to one turn, right? You got these cards, you're setting this thing up. Oh, someone just went exactly where you wanted to do. They just got 15 points, right, on that one turn. You're about to do the same thing. And at the end, if you were the one to sneak in there right before them, you would have won. So a lot of the game can come down to just one turn sometimes. I've seen multiple games have this. It leaves a little bad taste in your mouth, but it's okay. It's not bad because uh, the game's short. You know, it, it's it's about 30 minutes, so it's it's, it's not a long game. Uh, so those are the only negative things I have to say about the game. But overall, it is fantastic, and for all these reasons, is definitely getting a sax or serenade to be inducted to my gaming library. <laughs> Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a Game Topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.